Hello, this is John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. I'm going to continue our work on making a SKU T. So we've looked at how to request the data using Siphon and how to make a basic SKU T plot using MetPy that had temperature, dew point, and wind barbs. And we also set some access limits. So last week we got to write about here. One of the things that I noticed looking at this is there are a lot of wind barbs. And they also go off the top of the plot here. There are wind barbs above 100 HPA, but we cut our axis limits there. So the barbs are dutifully plotting, but we probably don't want them. So the first trick that we're going to look at is how to use something called Boolean masking and get rid of those wind barbs. So here in our notebook, I'm going to create a mask. You could call this anything that you'd like. And I want wind barbs only where there is pressure greater than or equal to 100 HPA. So if we look at what's in that mask array now, you see that we have a bunch of trues and falses. So these are Boolean values for whether each value in the pressure array is greater than or equal to 100 HPA. So you see for a while it's true, and then it becomes false as the balloon continued to ascend. I can use that Boolean array there to control what barbs plot. So we're going to need to make a new figure, since we don't want to plot on top of what we already have up here. So I'm going to go ahead, grab what we've got, and we're going to change how this plot barbs call looks slightly. You know, normally we could provide an index. We would say, I want the first 10 items or something like that. Here, we just pass this Boolean array in. And remember, you have to do it to P, U, and V, because these all need to be the same length. What's going to happen is where it's true, we'll get barb values and plot them. Where it's false, nothing will be plotted. So if we run that cell, you see that we now only have barbs between our surface pressure and 100 hectopascals. It's still not ideal, though, because down at the bottom, the barbs are on top of each other, and it's just a mass of black ink on the page right here. That's not very useful. There's also some overlap up here I wouldn't mind getting rid of. And we're not going to go through and do this manually, because you might be doing this in a program where you're making 100 skew t plots or 1,000 skew t plots to look at. Well, we can use a trick to skip values. So again, instead of saying you know, 0 to 10 or something here, double colon 5 is going to plot every fifth value. So colon colon 5. And then again, we need to do it out here. So this is going to operate on our masked array. So we're already masked. And now we're only going to plot every fifth value. And that's great, sort of. So we have less overlap down here. There's still some because there are a lot of barbs there. But up here at the top of the sounding, it's really sparse now. And that's not ideal either. So we can actually resample this. MetPy provides some tools for you to do this. First, let's go ahead and we're going to import NumPy because we're going to need it. And we're going to import the calc module for MetPy as mpcalc. First, what I need to do is define the values where I would like barbs close to. And then we'll try to find the closest ones. So I'm going to call that my interval. And let's make that between 100 and 1,000 hectopascals in an increment of 50. So and then we'll attach units to that. So if I look now at what's an interval, see 100, 150, 200, and so on up to 950, because it's non-inclusive on that range. So we're going to get the indexes that we want to keep, that we want to plot barbs at. And we're going to use the resample nearest neighbor 1D. 
from MetPy. If we hit Shift Tab to bring up the doc string here, we see it returns the nearest neighbor indexes based on our specified centers. And so it wants to know the array of data, so pressure in this case, and then our centers we called interval. Go ahead and run that cell and we look at what it produces and we see the indexes of the barbs that we want to plot. So again, I'm gonna go back up here, borrow our basic skew t again, and I'm gonna plot those indices of pressure u and v. So we run that cell. Now we're getting closer to something that we want. You see that we don't have too much overlap down here, but this is an evenly spaced in linear space set of points that we gave the nearest neighbor resampler, which as we get towards the top of the sounding becomes more sparse because it's on a logarithmic axis. So the last step that we're going to do is use something from NumPy called log space. If we look at the doc string on it, it takes the start and stop. You can optionally specify the number of steps that you would like in there. The default's 50, which actually works pretty well for soundings. It's always good to test a new function out when you're working with it to make sure you understand how it works. Because you might be tempted to approach this and say, well, I want values from 100 to 1000, go. That's not going to work. You see that we're getting very large numbers and then infinity. The key here is that 100, we're going to replace with two because the log base 10 of 100 is two. Log base 10 of 1,000 is three. Now we get exactly what we expected. Okay, so again, we're going to produce our interval that we would like the data points over, but we're gonna do it using log space this time from two to three. Don't forget to attach units. And then we're going to resample the data using our nearest neighbor. And I'm going to go ahead, we could just run this cell again, but for continuity, I'm going to paste it down here and run it. And now we're at roughly what we want. We've got linearly even barb spacing on a log axis resampled without too much overlap. Hope you found this useful in helping dress up your skew T's as we continue on our journey to make a really nice looking skew T plot with MetPy. As always, feel free to contact us with any questions you have, and we'd always love to see how you're using MetPy. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at MetPy and at Unidata for our latest updates. Thank you for joining me on this MetPy Monday.